Tubes. We're gonna head out and change out a liquid line solenoid valve and a time clock on a walking box and I'm gonna show you how to change out a liquid line solenoid valve for a walk-in cooler. Ever wonder how much of our lives have we spent at red lights? And this is a red light under time lapse. This is our liquid line solenoid valve and our coil, the star of the show. Okay, where you want to start off is, is pump your unit down. So you go right to the receiver king valve and we're going to front seat it all the way to the front. Driver up in. And then you can pump all your refrigerant back to the unit here. I like to put the caps back on just in case if you get a packing that's leaking. I like to put those back on. And then I'll go ahead and pump it down the rest of the way by pushing in the contactor. And the launcher comes way down here. And it's bringing all the gas from the system back around into our condenser, backing it up into the condenser and the receiver. I'll go ahead and pull her on down into the negative. Okay, so this is out to your coil. We're turned off there. We have a call for cooling. All the gas gets sucked back into the system, back around into here. Now, if your compressor valves are good, it'll hold. You might have to front seat this valve after you get it pumped down, your suction service valve. Then that would seal off this line, your suction line and your liquid line. And we can go down to the box and remove the solenoid valve and replace it. After we replace the valve, we're going to change out our liquid line dryer. We got the 083S here. And then after we replace the dryer, we can evacuate from the low side. Keep this front seated. Get a call for cool and we'll pull a vacuum from the low side all the way around down through the evaporator coil all the way back up the liquid line, through the dryer, and all the way to right here. And that's what we have isolated. You're gonna wanna kill power to what you're working on. Beer box. Oh. I kinda got my light set up. I wanna pop that uh, solenoid coil off of there first. And uh, to do that, on those damn FOSS valves is a flat, all you need is a flathead, flathead screwdriver. You should be able to get her under there and just dry her up. And, wow, that thing's still got voltage. So once again, mislabeled breakers, you've really got to check your stuff on old units. I'll tell you that right now. 
let's go see if we can find a breaker for it. We found the breaker that went to everything. And we finally got the power off. It's never easy. We'll put that light up there. All right, so we got the coil off. And we want to get this valve out. I'm just going to cut it out with the tubing cutter. And then we'll work on, uh, well, we can take this off too real quick. We'll expose the wires. They're using a 208 volts on this little guy. for the thermostat I got gotcha. you black and green white goes to white on my solenoid valves, I usually always buy the Sporlin ones. That's usually how I do it. Hear that? It was actually sucking in a vacuum. How cool is that? Pretty cool, huh? And let's chop this one off right here. our new valve the biggest thing you need to get together is they're directional so you need to know where your in is on the sporlin it'll say in on the inlet so that we know the inlet sides coming from our condensing unit and the outlet side is going to our TXV inlet outlet now what's cool about the sporlins is you can take these apart for brazing so you don't heat stuff up and melt it uh, you can also put your magnet on here. If you haven't seen a coil magnet, I'll show you one here in a little bit. Sporlin makes a magnet that'll slip on here and energize the solenoid valve. It's great for troubleshooting. It'll get you through a, a Friday night service call if you have a dead coil. Um, but I'm going to take this one apart. Break it loose. We'll, we'll put the guts up here on the little little something hazy IPAs, and that's it. Our gasket, our valve seats right here, and our poppet. And there it is. I want to get the direction right, so we got our inlet and our outlet. You don't want to mix that up. It can make for a long day if you get them backwards. Uh, and on these spore lens, the inlet is the high one, the outlet is the low one if you're looking at the side profile. And that's it right there. And get your pipe all prepped, shined up, reamed out, and then you can refit your solenoid valve. Now I'm going to see if I need to make a piece right here. And I'm going to have to make a small little chunk of pipe. Oh, look at that. It's usually how it goes. 
have to make a small little chunker. One small little chunker of pipe. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to make. Ooh, I like that right there. Yeah. Right there with the swedge on the end. Alright, we're gonna have to make a small little chunk of pipe. Things are flying in here. Look out, look out everybody. Too little. Oh, maybe that's the one right there. Three eighths. Little uni bit. Make a swedge, huh? Get some hot fingers going. She's a hot one. Yes, she is. There it goes. We got swedge. Ooh, hot to my legs. Where is the cutter? There's my tape measure. Yeah, about right there. How'd you guys like my tape measure, huh? The finger bang tape measure? Okay, we got parts. We made our connector piece. All right, let's see how our part fits. Oh, that's good. Let's go custom step up. Another advantage to taking the valve apart too is when you braze, you don't have to wrap the solenoid valve. There's nothing in there to melt. You got all the part that's going to melt is out right here. And this is the part we're concerned with is the Teflon valve seat right there. And that's the part you're worried about melting. And that's why you wrap the valve. Now you do want this to cool off real good. Get a wet rag, cool her down. Don't get water inside your solenoid. That'd be a bummer and uh get her cooled down and then you could rebuild your solenoid our valve changed out coil rewired back up actually the wiring took longer than changing out the solenoid we're all back together we're gonna go up to the roof and change that dryer out next i'll get me a little pile of meow mix going here my garbage and whatnot there he goes with the flux again this is the best trick I ever learned. It works a lot of the time. You're going to sweat stuff out. Well, don't sweat the dryer out. You're going to let all the moisture back in the system. Really? And what is, what's the new dryer and what's my vacuum pump going to do? Suck it out? I love it. When there used to be that debate on the, on the YouTubes. Ugh, it's good shit. type of a channel lock looking thing there we go rip and pull okay we need a little torchy yeah we'll reach got my wet rag wet rag of titus you know the best way to do refrigeration you guys really want to know is the way that you like to do it. That's the best way. And the way that works for you.
rubber roof. Keep the heat on some metal. Don't melt the guy's new roof. Uh, and then the fittings come out super clean. Get our freshie here. Yeah, get the arrow going to our stuff, right? Just like that. Fits like a glove, bro. Let's get her Barry the Herman. Oh, Herman is buried. Yeah. I'm gonna cool that off so I can get my hands in there. And I'll burn myself. I can get her right in there. Barry. Is it Barry the Herman or Barry McCockiner? The Scottish refrigeration guy. Oh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Almost there. Okay. All right, we got our defrost timer changed out. Now I need to set it up. They had it for like maximum defrost at the nighttime, which is cool. I'm okay with that. We had her going at like 2 in the morning. 2 in the morning. I'm going to get some power on so I can pull the vacuum. That was musical breakers. Musical breaker. Let's see if we can set some thermostat. We need a flashlight action. Here we go. You got your solenoid and your dryer all replaced. Go ahead and, uh, and you know your welds are good. Go ahead and get her on the vacuum pump. Now you can go ahead and run a little pressure test. Blow your nitrogen out and get her on the vacuum pump. And get yourself a good vacuum on there. Then we'll be ready to fire this thing back off. Okay, after you pulled a good vacuum on it. You can go ahead and release the charge back to the system. And I have it calling for cooling, so it should kick on. And this might do the three pump out because it's a scroll with the Emerson control. There's one. There's two because we have the power off. It's going to do the three pump out to get any liquid that might migrate back to your compressor out before it runs. And that's three. And then here we should be rock and roll right here. Here we go. up and running you can run some checks check all your work we're gonna check a pump down we're gonna turn the thermostat to a higher temperature watch this thing pump down and turn off to make sure our solenoid valve is operating correctly 
And then that's pretty much it. All right, I turned the thermostat up. I heard the solenoid close. Let's see if the unit pumps down for a check. And, uh, and then we'll reset it back and then we should be in good shape. Thank you.